Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Vladimir Somov and I'm a concept designer and an environment artist. I've worked primarily in video game cinematics and contributed to franchises like Assassin's Creed, Far Cry and For Honor. Today I want to walk you through the process of creating a 360 panoramic concept art using Unreal Engine to render and assemble a scene and Nvidia Ansel to capture a high resolution panoramic image which we will then take to Photoshop for a paint over and few final adjustments. The idea for this piece came after watching the Lighthouse movie, especially its opening sequence with the boat sailing through the heavy fog approaching the lighthouse. Originally it was supposed to be a sequence of high contrast black and white paintings, but at the same time I was thinking of recording a tutorial for 360 world building, so combining these two ideas came very naturally. Plus I thought that using 360 can give a very cool illusion of actually being on the boat. Also, I knew that with UE4, I will be able to easily capture multiple 360s from a boat's point of view and also from the point of view of the lighthouse. Once I had a solid idea of what I will be making, I started looking for references and doing some research on the lighthouses. The way I imagined it, the boat and the lighthouse were the main characters, and it's more about them than it is about the lightkeepers and the sailors. Because of that, I started looking for the steamboat references first, and generally I broke it into modern photos, historical pictures, miniature models and paintings, which were a great reference for not only the boat but also the ocean. And lastly, I compiled few high resolution references for surface and the details. And that's how I usually go about collecting references, uh, that way I get a good range of multiple sources. I wasn't planning on replicating any particular boat, but instead I wanted to take elements I liked and combine them to get the most interesting looking silhouettes and the variety of details. Uh, for the lighthouse, uh, based on my research, I was imagining something far away from the shore and built on the rock with some of the rocks submerged in the water. Basically the worst case scenario for sailors. The lighthouse that immediately came to mind was the Eddystone Lighthouse in England, which looks like this, except that I think it looks a bit too modern for what I was looking for. So for the actual shape, I went with something like this lighthouse from US. And there were a few more pictures of Eddystone Stone and of course references of the uniform and the shots from the film. Let's take a look at the asset creation process before jumping into Unreal Engine. In this particular example, I will invest a bit more time into creating custom assets, which in return will allow me to have more flexibility when it's time to pick my shots and capture final composition. And not to mention that every time you model something nice, it can be reused as part of another concept or a personal piece. Of course it's not necessary that you have to model everything yourself, Oftentimes, you can receive models from another department or simply use whatever is available on the internet. As you can see I created few custom assets which I used to build my scene and I used a variety of different techniques to get these models done. We can look into them one by one starting with this early 20th century fishing boat. I started with a model that I downloaded from the internet. In a lot of cases it's a great idea to save time by starting with an existing model, especially if it's something generic like a boat or a car. Even though this model was not bad as is, I felt that it can benefit from some appraising and general adjustments to its proportions and the silhouette so that it closer matches with the references that I picked. Generally, if I have to appraise something, I would identify if the object or some of its parts are symmetrical. Using symmetry can greatly speed up the process and in this case I got lucky, the boat was mostly symmetrical. After setting up symmetry, I would break an object into logical parts. That can help me visualize what parts repeat so that I don't have to make something twice. In general, you want to reuse as much as possible. It's one of the best and fastest ways to create an illusion of complexity in a model. The actual appraising is pretty simple. Once you break down your model and set up the symmetry, you look for curved and round objects and add geometry until they look smooth. One thing to keep in mind is that sometimes it's easier to make something from scratch rather than appraising it and it's something very obvious but it's easy to forget. So it's a balancing act whether you want to make something brand new or you want to appraise an existing object and in this particular case only after I finished appraising this boat I realized that it would probably be a lot faster to make one from scratch. Like I said it's obvious but it's easy to forget. Once I was happy with the silhouette, I started working on adding smaller scale objects and cables. All of that will allow me to have close-up shots of the boat without being afraid that it won't hold up unless I do a lot of heavy paint over. Essentially, appraising boils down to two actions, adding extra geometry to cylinders and modeling smaller scale details. After going around the model and making sure that everything has consistent level of details, I felt that it's in good shape to move to the next step adding UVs, which is of course everyone's favorite, and I usually make it quick and dirty by using projections and auto-unwraps. 
In most cases, you can get away with that since uh, you can adjust position and scale of your UVs right in the engine. This part right here was the only exception when I had to spend extra time adjusting auto unwrap because I wanted to have that top section of the UVs run straight. And this will make a lot more sense once I start assigning materials in the engine. Last step would be breaking it up into material groups. That way you are telling Unreal that this object consists of multiple materials. Usually I would group everything that can share a material, like all painted surfaces, or everything that could be generic metals or wood. I would usually use shaders with different colors to help visualize how breakdown is going to look like. As you can see it came a long way compared to what we started with. And now that I feel comfortable with its quality and everything is set up, I can export it as FBX. Next we can look into these Lightkeeper Gentlemen's, which I also reused as Sailors. Since there is a good amount of references out there, I had a solid idea of how this uniform should look like. I was choosing between doing photogrammetry or using Marvelous Designer and I realized that both of these options would be an overkill for what I need, so I ended up sculpting everything in ZBrush. The approach to something like this is pretty simple. I would start with a base mesh and paint in a mask for a clothing item I need. Once the mask was ready, I would use it to extract new geometry, which I can clean up and sculpt on top. I would keep my subdivision slow and shapes simple until I have entire outfit blocked out. His boots required a bit more sculpting and I even gave him some noodles instead of shoelaces but you can't really see them since they are covered by his pants. Once I had everything blocked out I used clay build up brush to sculpt in some folds. Nothing fancy here, just quick and dirty sculpt based on the few historical pictures that I had. What helps is that due to long exposures of the first cameras, everyone looks very stiff in the pictures, so it's like they're in a natural state of T-pose. I kept sculpting folds while looking at the references and taking into account different thicknesses of the cloth and uh, trying to approximate how it would sit on him. I was trying not to go too deep into technicality of sculpting folds, since that itself can take all day if you were to do this properly. After I was happy with the sculpt, I added a few more details like buttons and seams, and I brought in a hat which I polymodeled because it was faster for me to do it that way. When everything is complete, I merged all of it together and auto remeshed so that it has manageable poly count and a nicer edge flow. I generated UVs on that uh, lower poly mesh that we got and exported it as OBJ so we can upload it into Mixamo. In Mixamo, I looked for a variety of poses and I ended up exporting more than I needed since I wanted to experiment with it and see which one of them will work better with the boat. And last step for me was compiling all of the poses in a single file and making sure the scale is consistent and proper and different materials assigned for skin and clothing and of course selecting all of them and exporting in a single FBX. Now that I got the bolt and the light keepers, it's a good idea to work on the lighthouse. Although I had multiple different references, there was one particular lighthouse that I liked the most. I did some research and found some of its dimensions, which I used to make sure that I'm not making something unrealistic in terms of how tall it is or its circumference. As you can see, I dropped in a human reference to make sure that all my human-centered elements like doors, windows, and railings are properly scaled. Nothing breaks realism more than having inconsistent or unrealistic scale of everyday objects. Stuff like doors and door handles we see in our daily life and can pretty much subconsciously identify when it's not scaled correctly. Since our lightkeeper has to live somewhere, I modeled him a little house, which I mostly based on the lighthouse film. When the modeling was complete and I felt happy with what I got, once again I gave it UVs and did a material breakdown. All that's left now is selecting everything and exporting it, and this time I broke it down into two FBXs, one for the lighthouse and one for the house itself. Last thing that we need is the ocean plane, and that's by far my favorite part. I get very excited every time I have to make CG water. Might be because I spent most of my childhood by the sea. Of course you can get away with just a plane with some reflective material and tiling normals, but that would be too simple, so instead I used a Houdini Ocean Simulation plugin. It uses scientific data to create a realistic ocean movement model, and it has few settings like intensity and wind direction, which will give you a different uh, looking body of water. I did want to show you one more way you can fake an ocean with simple noise in case you don't have access to a proper simulation. You would want to start with a plane, and you do need a fair amount of geometry there. Next, you would want to apply generic noise to it and give it some intensity on Z-axis and scale Y-axis. Basically, you want to stretch it so that it roughly looks like waves. By animating position of that noise, you can get an illusion of waves moving. Next, you want to duplicate that noise and scale it down so that you can get smaller looking waves and add some turbulence into the water. Last step would be giving it some inward push so that it pinches geometry and waves don't look too sharp and it actually looks like it's cresting. Once you have everything set up, it's just a matter of adjusting the scale of that base noise to get different intensity of the waves and different look of the ocean. For an ocean made out of two noise maps, it looks pretty okay, but of course any simulation would look a lot better. 
unless you're doing still water, where you can easily get away with just a plane. Now with Ocean Radiant set up, I gave it top-down UV projection and exported it as Alembic Geometry Cache. The reason why I went with Alembic instead of FBX is because I wanted to export animation as well as geometry. And if you don't know, Alembic is a file format that is used in VFX to store a large amount of data, typically produced by simulation, so it's ideal for stuff like destruction and fluids. Alembic stores data for each vertice per frame, so it doesn't need a rig to play back complex animations. And on that note, we can move to Chapter 2, Megascans and Unreal Engine.